We're here. Hi everyone, it's Bonnie Joyce back in another video. If it's your first time here, please subscribe to the notification bell to join the Barney Party. here at Cork Abbey, a National Trust. Come along with us and explore the whole of the house, the grounds and everything. This is the tea room, restaurant bit. Ice cream there. So John Harper from Bart. Doesn't put my name on it, Bart. <laughs> That's the body. So this stable door has recently returned to Lake Abbey from Newmarket. The horseshoes from the most successful Harper race horses were placed on the door with the horse's name and the year of winning scratched on. Oh, really? Oh, I'm have to... And here is uh, an old piano. Oh. Oh. Mm. Sorry for Wasn't me. <laughs> I'll pick up in a minute. Learning room, you've got up there. Meeting in progress. Oh, that's beautiful. Need some horse stables, are they? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, I 
Oh, no, that's cool. Oh, you broke your GoPro. It didn't. I'll be fine. It's all buried off here. So you can't go back to the inside. This is an abandoned property which has been left over by previous people that have visited before. That's cool. All the details are awesome. Lovely archway, darling. This is oh, a stable yard at Cork Abbey. This is a stable yard at Cork Abbey. Oh, I'm not even going to say it. I'll, I'll put some information up. I like these things. Here, stable yards and outbuilding at Cork Abbey. That's where we are. Stable yards at Cork Abbey. <laughs> you try and say that. It's very dark in here. You gotta throw a bean bag into that horseshoes. Horseshoe game. Can you throw a bean bag into each horseshoe? Please tidy up afterwards. Hey, nay. <sighs> Tied up afterwards yourself. I'll oh, behave yourself, woman. It's so cruel to me. I have short term memory problem, that's how they treat me. We're going to the house, gardens and church. Here's the entrance to the house map. There's a little bit of information. You want to pause. Of course, there's lots going on. What's, what's on? Please keep dogs on a short lead at all times. That's quite cool. Yo, oh, look at that. Scooby Doo. I like tweed. It's nice one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome, mate. Well, I didn't hear that. Awesome. Uh, 
that's my best side, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, we come into a house which is very, very different. In fact, it's unique in the National Trust. It's different for several reasons. One of which is that everything that you see belongs in the house. Furniture, decoration, everything. Nothing has been taken out and nothing has been brought in. And even things which were here and which ordinarily looked like rubbish there on the floor have been kept in store in one of the closed rooms or up in the stove yards. So, the other reason that it's particularly impressive is this house brought about a change in the law in the 1980s. Prior to this house, the National Trust were allowed to take this physical building, not the contents, in lieu of death duties. Because of the curious nature of this house, i.e. that it had been in the same family for so long, because it had been kept entirely without things being thrown away, there was a big push for the contents to be included and the law has changed to allow that to happen. And that's the only property in the National Trust that is so, where the integrity is so great. So it's probably about the change in, in the UK law. But the building itself goes back to 1100. The earliest part is over on the east wing, and when you go into the service hall later, that will be the earliest part. It was an Augustinian priory for a couple of hundred years, but that was only operating as a cell, i.e. a production point to feed Repton Priory. Anyway, when this uh, particular priory fell out of use, the property was leased to a farmer, who used it as a home, and that was the Tudor Great Hall. A Tudor Great Hall is just one very big, long, tall, empty room with a hole in the roof to let the smoke out from the fire on the floor down below. Subsequently, it's leased off to another farmer who decides he wants something better. So he fits external staircases, or an external staircase to the wall, which allows access to so knock through the wall, and then put in floors. And having put in floors, they put in walls, and thereby created a big house, much more like we would recognise. And he liked it so much he built another one over on the west side. And then they joined them up across the back oh, cool. with a building called a range. And then across the front, where we're looking now, he built a screen wall, about four feet high, and a gatehouse. And that wall there with the pub on the China cabinet is the gatehouse. Oh, wow. So that dates back to about 1440. So near on 600 years ago. Now that's a Tudor manor house that's been created. And that's the property that was bought by the first half a crew. And they lived like that. Fine. But in 1700, or thereabouts, a very good marriage was made between the seventh baronet oh, yeah. and Lady Catherine Manners. Yeah. The definition of a good marriage being that she brought all the money, he had all the ideas and spent it. No, not really. And he spent it by building on the outside of the house as we see it today. Basically. Without the portico. So that's what he built. Oh, wow. All of the buildings prior to that are integrated with it. That's awesome. 1838, the steps go, and instead we see the house as it is today, with the portico, the pillars, and so on. Now, while the family lived here, they, as the poor families do, ebbed and flowed in size and in need. And when the family got bigger, they moved into the few rooms that they were living in didn't suit. They would move out of them and move to another part which was perhaps bigger, better situated or so on. And when they did that, they would simply put anything they didn't want in the old room, the rooms, lock the door, leave it, forget it and never go back. And that's why the house is sometimes referred to as the abandoned mansion, because bits of it were abandoned. And that happened over successive centuries, ebb and flow, moved around, and you can see quite clearly, particularly on the top floor, where one instance of closure happened. And that's because on one side of a door, you've got a very tall opening for the door, mm -hmm. and on the other side, it's much lower. 
And that's because they simply chopped the top of the door, fitted it in the wall, plastered over it. And you can see that clearly as you walk along the corridor. So lots of taxidermy here. Follows the Victorian fascination with uh, learning about nature. And the only way they could study was to study dead animals. That's because the live ones used to run away. Yeah. Makes it very hard. <laughs> But you will see a lot of taxidermy. Yeah. But you will see primarily a family home. A family home which passed to the trust in 1984 when the last member, or the owner, the tenant, I should say, at the time, left it. And since then, we've been progressively opening it. But the key thing here is that we leave it as we found it. Yeah. And we keep it and maintain it as we found it. There we are. Awesome. Thank you, very Thank you very much, mate. Very much. Cheers. But never an abbey. They only added abbey to make it sound grander. Really? <laughs> and cork is actually derived from the old English word for chalk, or C A U L K E. Yeah. And that's what this is built of limestone, which is oh, former really? chalk. Wow. Probably limestone from their own quarries on the estate. Mm. So there we have it. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. Here is the waiting room, Henry Harper Crew, 1921-1991, continued to live here after Cork was transformed, transferred to the National Trust in 1985. Very awesome. This is the car catcher room. Very cool. Got there in a minute. What was life really like? Cork is filled with thousands of items accumulated over generations by people who lived and worked here. Country house life between 1700s and 1900s is affected in objects ranging from Chinese skillets, tax dimmery and paintings to the everyday items of lamps, stoves and stockings. Home to the Harper family from 1622, one of Derbyshire's wealthiest families. They built their fortune through legal careers, had words, had, marriage, settlements and land ownership. Very cool. Old piano there. That's quite cool. Going up the stairs now, almost there. Richard, I can't quite see that. Hey, you three, I can get a photo of you. I will. Right, turn around, ready? Just for a sit on that, it's pretty cool. Hello? There we go. 
Oh, what's that, pig? Oh, watch yourself, Callie. Sorry, Don. No Is this a flash? Okay, I think that kettle. <laughs> Pig, pig. Pig, pig. Yeah, whatever. 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 This floor isn't open to the public at the moment. So if you're coming around this time, they've got a barrier over the top of over the this part. This is the firefighter equipment. Oh, no, I'm there. Liverpool Road. Oh, yeah. Hello. 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 The Longdons. We're never actually shut off. Okay. Um, they were still used to serve. The details are always there. They tend to live in the family apartments, yeah. which are just off the entrance where you came yeah. in. Yeah. And then the left. Yeah. Uh, but these rooms were still. I'm going to go back for a bit a minute and walk this way. Oh, I'm here as well. Okay. <laughs> I'm just. So this is the dining room, as you've probably gathered. Uh, when the house was built in 1701, this was actually a suite of four rooms. Uh, it was known as the gilt leather suite, so it gives you some idea of how grand it was at the time. Mm -hmm. But in 1794, the 7th uh, baronet, who created the back butler's pantry in the kitchen, you'll see yeah. later on, uh, swept it all away and created this dining room. The, um, all the baronets were uh, high sheriffs of Derbyshire, uh, and as such, they gave formal dinners uh, mm. in this room. Um, when it came down to Charles uh, Harper Crew, he um, had no servants, had no money, uh, uh, didn't have a yeah. kitchen even, uh, yeah. so he brought in outside caterers, um, which is why you've got the form like a uh, tops in there, so they yeah. prepared the food on there and sent it brought it into here. He decorated the room in Wedgwood Blue. Mm. And when the National Trust took over, they went back through all the layers of uh, paint and so on and found this original paint scheme that came blue okay. and uh, salmon yeah. and restored it to the, to the original. But when they'd finished, they realised they'd made a mistake. Oh, no. um, the whole point about cork is that it is unrestored. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful as it is, it is and you can't, um, you can't really fault them for, for no. doing it, but yeah. uh, it's not right for cork anyway. Um, yeah, so well, I think it looks nice. It's awesome. It does look nice. <laughs> yes, it's very nice. Yeah. Can you imagine all the noise in here? All the noisy men. That's good art. You find, if you look at the table, there's something missing. There's something missing. What's missing from the table? Placemats. Ah, that's not good. Yes, good though. Go on. Nice. Correct. Yeah. Well done. Nice. There are no knives in Colcabin. I don't know why. Don't know why. <laughs> don't think it's a safety thing or whatever. <laughs> no one seems to know. Well, nobody else spoke to me. And it's fine then, and they. That's so yeah, cool. Quite, I think there are some details like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, so this is so this the breakfast room. Breakfast room. Okay. Um, Any of nice photos again? So you've got the picture on the back wall. That, that's the original one you probably saw in the entrance hall. Down, yeah. Yeah, of the uh, stairs going up the front. You know, the, what a house like this should look like before they ripped out the, uh, the steps and put the portico in. Um, quite a, a poignant photograph underneath it. Yeah. You see the five children. Mm -hmm. The boy at the back is Richard Finden Harper. Crew, um, who died before his father did so. Um, oh wow! His father was Savancy Harper Crew. Um, Richard died before he did, so the line died out with yeah. him. Um, his daughter, the, the the girl on the left, is Hilda. She's the one who inherited. Uh, had to pay massive death duties and sold off uh, a lot of natural history and books and land and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, had to compress the house right down, so she just used the. Um, family apartments, which are on the left as you go through the main gates, yeah. the main doors rather. Um, but because she had to pay massive death duties, they set up a trust so that they wouldn't have to in future. So the trust was so that it passed through the generations um, and also uh, that they didn't pass on the ownership, they passed on the tenancy, the, t the ownership stayed with the trust, which had two effects. One was that she, Hilda had no children, her two next sisters didn't have any children. It was only the youngest, Francis, who's on next to her, um, who married a Mr. Jenny. So they had three children, uh, Charles, uh, Ermine and Henry Jenny. So under the terms of the will and the trust, Charles inherited and changed his name to Charles Harper hyphen crew um, because uh, that's what they did in those days. <laughs> um, and then he had no children and the trust sort of fell down and because he was a tenant he couldn't sell things to, to pay for the um, uh, death duties and so on. Likewise when Henry inherited from him he was a tenant and couldn't sell stuff to pay the death duties so he then passed it on ultimately to the National Trust. Oh, wow. well, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> that table's pretty sweet well, as well isn't it? The table is actually made by the estate carpenter. Oh wow. Uh, a <laughs> chap called Thomas Marriott, about 1850. Um, so the man that made the stable doors, yeah. etc. He made this table, he made all the uh, pedestal um, tables in there for the um, uh, collection of uh, fossils and minerals and what have you. And in the library there's a, a bigger table, oh, that's even, awesome. even better table. Oh thank you. Made by him. Awesome. Oh, ground floor. Ground floor. Yes, that's right. I'm trying to see what I can do. He just said we don't need to rush. So. Well, it seems they're so tall. <clears throat> Yeah, we've got lots to say. Yeah, we've got lots to take in. Alright, yeah. we'll do your vlog in and we'll do a walkthrough. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to have to do a walkthrough, alright? Yeah. So this is the library. This is the library. <laughs> many, many books. About 4,000 books. 4,000 books, wow. <laughs> have, you, have you read them all? Yeah, 
Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> About 4,000 books, wow. This is the Bador, Bador, I think. That's so cool, man. Look at all this. So grand. Yellow room. Long life. I think it was a later edition, probably. Yeah. Like the built extension was. So it's got the same similar roof, so I think it probably yeah, was yeah. designed to be part of that house. So everything that's in here was in here when you found it? Yep, everything, oh, wow. in the whole house. That's so awesome. You haven't had to buy anything to fill the house, though, because it's already. So a sink and bar. Barrier over there. This way first, okay. Space, you see, for all of his life. He, uh, it was his bedroom initially, and um, then he simply kept his personal um, collections in here for the rest of his life. Oh. <clears throat> Look at that, tiny chairs, teeny weeny chairs. Uh, night nurseries. Although the last child was born at in 1921, 1921 hundreds of children. So she read that stuff. I mean, look at this photograph. That's awesome. Available from the shop. 100 photographs. Photographs are awesome, man. Take a seat and pick up, pick up a book. These books are available for you to read while I was in the house. If you would like to support the property and find a new favourite book, visit our second hand bookshop near the restaurant. Lady Crew's room.
that library in there. They have a hell of a lot of birds in this place, don't they? Old photographs. And this room had um, a bad leak in the room. The National Dress Factory in case only. Oh, yeah. It was lead and it had crept and oh. holes in it. And so that's why there's no wallpaper. Ah. We didn't strip it off. It was held on by something like. Oh wow, look at that bed. It's so special, it's even behind glass. It's a rare survival. I'm gonna click pause and read. Close up of the embroidered hangers. Hangings. Oh, I heard little trophies, that's awesome. Really cool. It's very pretty in here. Ooh. Get this little bit here as well. Oh, awesome. So this is the housekeeper's room. Yes, if you look at the door, you'll see that she not only had, no, the door over there. Oh, I'm sorry. She not only had the lock. Yeah. She had a privacy lock. So down the bottom? No, it's here. There's a... Oh yeah. And that would go into the thing across the other side on the door charm. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. That's cool. It's really awesome that is. Yeah, so she could lock herself in. Oh lovely. And that door there was the living closet. That little room was the living closet. Ah. And she was the only one with the key. Oh, that's cool. For the living closet. I expect they were quite expensive to make the keys if they wanted to copy and stuff. Oh they've got loads and loads of I think they've got the keys for each of the rooms. Oh, that's cool. So they're big old-fashioned ones. Very cool. That's to show you what's happened to quite a few of the collection. Okay. When the trust opened the box, the butterflies themselves had disintegrated, um, and all you've got left are the pins. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Which is such a shame. Yeah. Very fascinating. Kitchen that way. If you're, if you're really tall, make sure you duck down. If you're coming down here, it's quite dark. I won't be able to see that. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. Mm. It's very chilly down here. Yeah. Well, the pulley systems that bring stuff in. Well, I should think that's up there, so pulley for the window. Oh, the window, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, they still used it, um, even though they had electricity and charcoal and wood and coal. Yeah. And it's because it was very good for even. There's a little room here, guys. Like the boy or something. Okay. 
Yep. Yeah. Still is not being used. Oh, what I would be. This is the servants' room, which is a modern day. This is the servants' room, which is a modern day staff room. Servants' hall. Please be aware no, of low lighting, <laughs> uneven yeah, floor and steep steps. Steep steps. <laughs> you look like it's had to come down, doesn't it? I don't see. Look how well built it is. The way that the furniture is new. Yes. Well, yeah. How to construct things. Yeah. And, and they come back to the same, although they haven't been using these two for a couple of years yeah. for some reason. Yeah. But they come back and they just sort of just do a little bit to rebuild yeah. everything in gear. Yeah. And they just last, you know. They're just such good construction. Yeah. Oh, it's very creepy. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> Beautiful singing there, bro. I can't see it. <clears throat> oh, once you duck, you ready to be tall in it. You come in it, let up the ceilings are quite low. Look at that for a ladder, mate. Well, long. Oh, that's squeaky. It's your bathtub there, have a bath. Cool, blimey. The steps get steep and then the ceiling gets lower. How'd that work out? Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my goodness. It's like the smuggler's tunnel. <laughs> oh, the scene gets lovely. Please keep to the left of the steps.
And in over three months, they, in 1821, they brewed 12,000 gallons. 12,000 gallons of beer? Yeah. And it was because, of course, the water was so bad that nobody drank the water. Everybody no. drank the beer because no. it was a lot safer. Mm -hmm. So even you would have been drinking beer. Yeah. yeah. How would you like that? <laughs> Those ceilings are well tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> Thank you for leaving it open for us to do our last bit of the house. Oh, you're very welcome. We don't go home until the last visitors come through. Oh, well, I don't know if we are the last people, but thank you so much. Thank you. We saw the firefighters stuff in the house, and here is the fire engine shed. If you like to click on pause and read this one. Very cool. Very awesome indeed. Who are we going to now? The, oh, I can't even read that. Shop. Who are we going to now? Here is the shop, and this is where you exit the National Trust. You've plenty of things around here. It's all your buried stuff. Here. Which is quite cool. Lots of animal, animal things. That's the prices. <whistles> Many hats. <whistles> My first garden. Oh, that's a carrot. Mm -hmm. Wake up the garden. Wake up, it's a beautiful morning. School of the gardening. So cool. I think we're ready to go home to our property now, our house that we're staying at. Expansion of the shop. Hundred words for rain. And your book and gives us your cards around here. Oh, that's a galley. <laughs>
that was cool cavy everybody so if you have enjoyed the house that i showed you around the house and and the grounds that's everybody for today's video please like share comment and subscribe click the notification bell to join the party party cheers everyone